Evening, everybody. I'm I'm very thankful for the opportunity to um, appear in front of you again and preach the word. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, now a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I wrote this sermon in uh, early January. Um, and I thought that Granddad would be a little bit further along in his ex expanding of Romans. Uh, he does that in uh, Sunday mornings. So I thought it would be a little bit further along. But the book is so rich with, uh, with information and applications. Uh, that is, he's not farther than the verse I'll be covering tonight, which is going to be Romans 11.33. Uh, I assume that he will get there in two or three weeks, something like that, so he'll probably cover it soon. He'll no doubt refute a lot of what I'm going to say tonight. Walk it back a little bit. Um, so, my in seminary, I I had this professor. His name was Jeff Smith. It sounds like a, a very made up name. Uh, possibly he was doing something illegal and had to change his name. But Pastor Smith, uh, he tells the story of. How during his first few months in seminary, he resented or depreciated the idea that we couldn't understand God's governance of good and evil like he can. He, he couldn't wrap his head around that. He demanded, uh, how can you believe in the God of the Bible without having the same level of knowledge. How do we even know that Christianity is true? I'm, I'm sure that many people in this room have asked similar questions. Many of us long to know as God knows. He demanded to know as well. And this was actually the temptation of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, 5. So I'm going to be talking about the, the indescribable knowledge of God tonight. Our text is Romans 11:33. It says, Of the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments, his ways past finding out. It's a very simple text tonight, just the one verse. Uh, God's riches, his wisdom, and his knowledge are so deep, they're possible, it's impossible to explain his decisions or to understand his ways unless. God reveals it to you. God does reveal some things. God revealed his saving and redeeming power through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The revelation of his Son and the provision of his word empowers us to obey him. He gives us the, the tools necessary for the job. But at the same time, not everything about God and his plan is revealed to us. In our fallen state, we simply couldn't handle it even if he did. As long as we live in these mortal bodies, we must remain humble. We must let God be God and us be us, and we have to accept that fact. 
there are many people that are doing the opposite. They're working to humanize God and to deify man. And, and this is very perverse and wrong. The Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans, but specifically chapter 11, to remind us to stand in awe of God and His indescribable wisdom and knowledge. God's unfathomable wisdom means that He loves sinners like us. He died for sinners like us, making it possible for us to be forgiven completely, forgiven of our sins completely. Remembering such things helps us to bow to Him in both our joys and our sorrows. We can remind ourselves that He is God, He's in control, we're not. Paul can exclaim, God's ways are unsearchable. His words are impossible for us to understand or interpret. Again, without his revelation, his direct revelation. His words cause us to tremble and wonder in difficult times and in good times. We can humble ourselves and say, you are God. Our passage emphasizes the fact that God's knowledge far surpasses ours. His infinite power and strength enables him to ordain and know every future event in heaven and the cosmos. This power is not given to us for our own good which is a very hard pill for many people to swallow. But there are a number of reasons why we have trouble with such knowledge. First, God's knowledge is exhaustive. He, it, his knowledge creates, covers, the movement of every atomic particle since creation. Psalm 193, or sorry, excuse me, Psalm 139 says that God's thoughts towards his people are more than the sands of the seashore. His thoughts towards us are hundreds of millions more than the sands of the seashore. This means that God's plan for which he governs our world is way out of our league, both in sophistication and quantity of information. God can't describe the relation between gravity and quantum theory in a way that one scientist on Earth would understand. Even the words gravity and quantum could be horribly superficial and not entirely useful. Our knowledge even of what God has revealed to us as made evident is laughably primitive. We've studied the simplest forms of life for a hundred years, more than a hundred years. And although we have many samples of this primitive life, we aren't anywhere near replicating it. We can't even understand that. We, we, how, how dare we put ourselves on the same level as him? 
we, we can't even be this simple thing. God's ways are past finding out. God's questions Job about nature in Job chapter 38 to 42. He, he questions Job to the point where Job insisted that God stop asking. You might ask whether we could at least get a peek at the board that has the outline of God's plan on it for our lives. This leads to the second reason God's plan is unknown. The information would be damaging for us. It would be too toxic to handle. We might think it reassuring to see the list of those chosen by God for eternal life. We would make sure that we're among them and that or we would be sure that we know that we missed the boat. And therefore we could stop trying. We could relax eat, drink, and be merry with the time we have remaining, knowing where we would spend eternity. However, knowing with the certainty of God's knowledge that we'd be saved no matter what we did or believe would corrupt us beyond recognition as Christian. This knowledge is too toxic to our Christian walk. There are some Christians that try to blaspheme the name of the Lord. In order to be sure of where they're going, in order to seal their damnation. This is the obsession this is the obsession to know for sure. They, they want to know so bad that they would even blaspheme God to try to... Uh, they thought at least... They thought they could have at least some control over their future where they would spend eternity. They believe they could usurp God's control the future. Those Christians could never know with the certainty of God whether they were going to heaven or hell, but schemed that if they blasphemed, they could decide their fate and find peace from uncertainty and anxiety. Some lust for the certainty of God's knowledge of the future. And they're willing to treat their souls for even a fragment of it. God's knowledge is insurmountable. The knowledge of our death is another example of this toxic knowledge. We may think it interesting to know the day and the manner of our death or the death of our loved ones so that we can know exactly how much time we have spent have left to spend with those loved ones. We would think it helpful to know both the horrible and wonderful things of this life before they occur. But if we know what's involved in most things we did, we might never have done them. 
It's an example. If we know that the end game for a job we're, we could take is that we'll ultimately quit or get fired, we probably wouldn't take that job. We probably wouldn't gain the experience that that, that job would have provided for us. We can handle problems on a daily basis, but we can never if we knew everything in advance. The knowledge of good and evil is restricted by God's own love for us. The good would be too good, and the evil would be far too evil. Ecclesiastes 8, 16 and 17 says, When I applied my heart to know wisdom, to see the business that is done upon the earth, for also there is neither day nor night to see his sleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. Because though man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. A man can take notice, and contemplate, or even consider the wisdom in creation and providence. But it's also very uncertain that a man can't find out the work that is done under the sun. They can't acknowledge, but they can know. They can observe or find out that it is done, but they can never know why it is done. The ways of God are in the deep water, not to be traced. They are unsearchable. They are past finding out. To return to the wording of the original text, they're inscrutable by the wise man. The man labor to seek it, he will not find. Even one that is diligent or laborious is not able to find out what has been done, what has been concealed by the Lord, unless God wants him to, unless he directly reveals it. It is best for men to be easy and quiet, to enjoy what he has in the best way he can. The truth is, God does not reveal the secret plans to his creatures for our good. The problem of evil has vexed Christians for centuries. Now Christians cannot the same. If God is both good and sovereign, why does he allow evil? Therefore, he must not be fully good, or he must not be fully sovereign. They try to restrict God's options 
ones easy to measure. It never occurs to them that God is protecting us from the information we can't, we aren't able to handle. One day, we'll learn more about Satan's rebellion, about Satan's creation, about why God chose to save this world rather than wiping it out completely and starting over. God will expose the origin of evil to us. Something that can't be understood by us finite creatures currently. We're in a position where we must depend on the judgment of the Father who loves us. God determined with some exception that the Book of Life Sorry. He determined with some exception that names of the elect and the lost must stay secret. Book of Life won't be open until Judgment Day. The ultimate battle between good and evil. And the reflection of the bell, the providence of God, best left to God. Just because God doesn't reveal everything, doesn't mean that He doesn't care for us. Some things He doesn't reveal. But he sent Jesus to reveal the most important thing. And there is the hidden mystery of how God deems the fallen world. He gives us the truth that sets us free. We should focus on our, our energy, our obedience, on service to him. God promised to take care of the obstacles in the past of those who trust in him. In Matthew, Jesus encouraged us to seek first his, his kingdom and righteousness. Do that and all of our future needs will be given to us. In closing, I'll read Deuteronomy 29:29. It says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever. That we may do all the words of his law. We can't know everything. We can know God. We need to rest in that truth.